Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton are one of music's hottest couples, despite being such an unlikely pair. From their early beginnings appearing on The Voice together to their engagement announcement in 2020, their relationship has gone from strength to strength and the public just can't get enough. The down-home country singer and the uptown pop superstar seemed like an odd couple. But their romance flourished, and they confirmed the rumors about a romantic relationship in November of 2015. Making their first debut as a couple at the Vanity Fair Oscars after party in 2016. It wasn't long before they became musical collaborators as well as romantic partners, with Gwen recording a duet for Blake's album, If I'm Honest, and performing together on stage. Just how did this California girl end up matched with an Oklahoma country boy? Join us as we explore the timelines of Gwen and Blake's music careers, personal achievements, and the ups and downs leading to their blossoming romance. Gwen Renee Stefani is a California girl through and through. She was born on October 3rd, 1969 in Fullerton, California. She had a Catholic upbringing in nearby Anaheim. In 1987, Gwen graduated from high school and began attending Fullerton College before transferring to California State University. Around this time, she began performing vocals for her oldest brother Eric's band, an up-and-coming act brimming with potential, no doubt. It was obvious from the jump that No Doubt had the it factor. In 1991, the band was personally signed to Interscope Records by Jimmy Levine. The band released its self-titled debut album in 1992, but its ska-pop sound was unsuccessful due to the popularity of grunge. No Doubt's third album, released in 1995, Tragic Kingdom, was considered the band's defining album, which gained them widespread popularity. Five singles were released from Tragic Kingdom, including the breakout hit, Don't Speak. Don't Speak was a landmark success, leading to the Hot 100 Airplay year-end chart of 1997. Stefani left college for one semester to tour for Tragic Kingdom, but did not return when touring lasted two and a half years. The album was nominated for a Grammy and sold more than 16 million copies worldwide by 2004. I think for no doubt, this is kind of like the in-between stage when you make a record. Most of the lyrical content focused on Gwen's often rocky relationship with then Bush frontman Gavin Rossdale and her insecurities, including indecision on settling down and having a child. Really are. He really wants to marry me. Oh, congratulations. 
so excited for you. Have you guys had a date? Yep. We're just, we're right around the corner. Any minute now. Any minute is going to be official. We're going to be late. We don't know. Yeah, we're going to be late. Um, where did the two of you meet? We met, um, we met here in L.A. at the Acoustic Christmas that K-Rock does every year. And I was the opening act. 15 minutes, we got to play, and he was the headliner. We met backstage under fluorescent lights and never stopped looking at each other since. No Doubt's 2001 album, Rock Steady, explored more reggae and dancehall sounds while maintaining the band's new wave influences. Okay. Watch out. December 18th, the record is coming out, No Doubt. Can you believe it? Very cool. One year it. We wrote it, we recorded it, and it's actually going to come out. It's like a miracle. It's a miracle. Is that really? When does it usually take point? It's taken, you know, up to three years to do a record. Last record took about two years, so we're at like one year. It's going to come out December 18th, I think. I don't know when the single's coming out, probably sometime in October, but um, we're going over to England to mix the record, and um, it's just really exciting because doing the whole thing with Eve has been like a real tease for me because it's been fun, you know, to watch it and see it on TV and stuff, but when it's like our record coming out, I can't explain it. When I found out it was coming out, my heart dropped. I was so excited and nervous, and I just can't wait to share it with people. You still get that? I'm really nervous right now because I'm talking about it finally. It's just like, it's a big deal for us, you know? And this record for us has been so much fun, and it's a really lighthearted, easy record. It's called Rock Steady. We, we worked with amazing people. We worked with Dr. Dre. We're working with William Orbit. Uh, Nelly uh, Hooper. Um, we worked in Jamaica for a couple weeks uh, recording. So it's just been like a lot of fun. I just can't wait for people to hear it. The album generated career highest singles chart positions in the United States, and Hey Baby and Underneath It All received Grammy Awards. <laughs> On the wall with our secret eyes. Taking a game, try to be feminine with my makeup bag, watching all the sin. I missed it, I said, lit up, lit up. Everybody else will find a vibe with girls with the tank tops and the bird. In 2002, Gwen won a Grammy Award alongside rapper Eve for Best Rap Sung Collaboration for their song, Let Me Blow Your Mind. Gwen Stefani's debut solo album, Love, Angel, Music, Baby, was released on November 12, 2004. The album features several collaborations with producers and other artists. Gwen created the album to modernize the music to which she listened when in high school. And Love, Angel, Music, Baby takes influence from a variety of music styles of the 1980s and early 1990s, such as new wave, synth pop, and electro. Gwen's decision to use her solo career as an opportunity to delve further into pop music instead of trying to convince the world of her talent, depth, and artistic worth was considered unusual. The album debuted on the U.S. Billboard 200 Albums chart at number seven, selling 309,000 copies in its first week. The album reached multi-platinum status in the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada. Gwen's album is now six times platinum worldwide and still counting. Wow. I'm not sure. I think I'm more excited than she is. I'm excited. I can't believe it. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, Jimmy, get in the first single from the album was What You Waiting For, which debuted atop the Aria Singles Chart, charted at number 47 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. 
reaching the top 10 on most other charts. The song serves to explain why Gwen produced a solo album and discuss her fears in leaving No Doubt for a solo career, as well as her desire to have a baby. Rich Girl was released as the album's second single, a duet with rapper Eve and produced by Dr. Dre. It is an adaptation of a 1990s pop song by British musicians and reached the US and UK top 10. The album's third single, Holla Back Girl, became Gwen Stefani's first US and second Australian number one single. It reached top 10 elsewhere. The song was the first U.S. music download to sell more than one million copies, and its brass-driven composition has upheld its popularity to this day. Gwen Stefani's second solo album, The Sweet Escape, was released on December 1, 2006. The album focuses more heavily on electronic and dance music for clubs than its predecessor. The act between having a baby and now launching your second solo album. Well, so far so good because he just gets to go with me everywhere and he's such a cool guy and he just is so chilled out and um, enjoys, like, I, when it's just me and him, he's like, what's going on? Because he's so used <laughs> to having so many people around, you know, and he's used to noise and, um, and we've been taking him everywhere. So um, it just, it hasn't really been that challenging. I mean, the sleep thing is definitely hard when you don't get to sleep and I am like a sleep aholic like I love sleep oh me too me too I could sleep for days on end frankly I'm like I'd be so happy on the tour when it's their oh, 12 hour drive yay you know <laughs> straight to bed <laughs> exactly its release coincided with the DVD release of Stefani's first tour entitled Harajuku Lovers Live Wind It Up, the album's lead single, used yodeling and an interpretation of The Sound of Music and peaked in the top 10 in the US and the UK. Obviously, people are going to start talking about it because of the sample that it uses. Which is so crazy because you guys had that, some kind of a show over here for The Sound of Music, right? That's right, opening in London. Which so. is weird timing because this, I wrote this record about a year and a half ago with Pharrell. We went, I went down to Miami just like by chance and we did like five songs together and um, this was one of them and I ended up doing um, a mashup. My whole like fantasy was to do like put Sound of Music to a beat, you know, because I love the Sound of Music and I just was like, that would be wicked, you know. You took the song with the yodel in it, of course. Yeah. Hill. Can you yodel very well? I, I think, you know what, I sort of can. It's weird. I, I'm not like the most, like singing is sort of like part of what I do. It's not really, I'm not like a singer or whatever, but um, I like, I can yodel a little bit. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> The single track, The Sweet Escape, was another popular hit and earned her a Grammy Award nomination for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals. To promote the album, Gwen embarked on a worldwide tour, the Sweet Escape Tour, which covered North America, Europe, Asia, and the Pacific, and part of Latin America. With Gwen promoting the Sweet Escape, 
no doubt began work on a new album without her and planned to complete it after her tour was finished. In March 2008, the band started making posts concerning the progression of the album on their official fan forum. Going back in the studio with No Doubt, we've been in the studio all year trying to write a new record and we have a lot of songs and it's been, I think it's my favorite um, time being in the studio. It's just about like really enjoying the moment and I can't wait for it to come out, but I'm still kind of enjoying the process. We still have a lot of work to do on the record, but um, so next year hopefully we'll have a new record and that's, that's the future, just No Doubt right now. Gwen made a post on March 28, 2008 stating that songwriting had commenced, but was slow on her end because she was pregnant with her second child. No Doubt headlined the Bamboozle 2009 Festival in May 2009, along with Fall Out Boy. The band completed a national tour in mid-2009. Well, it's really exciting because we kind of did it on a whim. We were basically in the studio trying to write new music, and um, I had just had my baby, and I was like, oh, let's get out of this room. Let's go on tour. Let's get motivated and inspired. And I think just getting out there and um, being on stage together is what we kind of do best, and putting the whole tour together has been really motivating and inspiring. So it, it feels incredible to answer the question. Actually, <laughs> it feels really, really good. Hey, baby. On the wall with my secret eyes. I take it in, try to be feminine with the makeup back, watching all the sin. Miss me, I sit it up, wicked. Everybody else surrounded by the girls with the chain tops and the pretty words. And I'm just sipping on camel me, watching boys and girls in the sex shop. The new album, Push and Shove, was released on September 25th preceded by the first single, Settle Down, on July 16th. Settle Down peaked at 34 on the Billboard Hot 100, with the album peaking at number three on the U.S. Billboard 200. Take this pink ribbon off my eyes. I'm exposed. It's no big surprise. Don't you think I know exactly where I stand? Similarly to Gwen, Blake's early career skyrocketed him to the height of fame. Born in 1976 to parents Dorothy and Richard, Blake Shelton lived a quiet and simple childhood in Ada, Oklahoma. 
something he would reflect upon in his music throughout his career. Blake was surrounded by the guitar riffs and emotive lyrics of country music, which heavily influenced his musical taste from an early age. By 17, Blake had graduated from high school in Oklahoma, and two weeks after leaving, took a leap of faith and moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a music career. It wasn't long before Blake's gamble move to Nashville paid off as his honest voice captured the attention of record labels. In 2001, Blake released his first ever single titled Austin. The song is a classic story of love, heartbreak, and regret. Austin was a massive success, becoming his first number one hit on the Billboard Hot Country singles and instantly boosted his self-titled first album, which featured the popular song, All Over Me. The album received positive reviews and people were excited to see what Blake would release next. Two years later, in February 2003, Blake released his second album, The Dreamer. The lead single for the album was The Baby, a soulful track that showed Blake in a more reflective state. It reached number one on the country charts, holding that position for three weeks. Blake Shelton's Barn and Grill was the title of his third studio album, released in 2004. Its lead-off single, When Somebody Knows You That Well, peaked at number 37 on the country charts, while the follow-up track, Sub Beach, became his third number one hit holding the position for four weeks. Blake released his fourth studio album titled Pure BS in 2007. Pure BS was a massive success, becoming his highest chart-topping album so far, reaching number eight on the US Billboard 200 chart and number two on the Billboard Top Country Albums. Start and Fires was Blake Shelton's fifth studio album, released in 2009. This album kept the Blake Shelton sound alive with soulful country songs, as well as fun, upbeat, and fast-paced anthems. The album's lead single, titled She Wouldn't Be Gone, showed an aching Blake lamenting on past failed relationships. By 2011, Blake was touring around the country and had even collaborated with Michael Buble. It was safe to say that Blake Shelton had become a household name in the U.S. I like a song that gives me chill bumps And now and then there's some that still do But I'm fed up with the same old vanilla Hey, how about you? I'm tired of the same old guy with the same old song by the same old love it goes on and on Blake Shelton released the album Red River Blue on July 12, 2011 led by the single Honey Bee You be my soft and sweet I'll be your strong and steady You be my glass of wine I'll be your shadow The song received 138,000 downloads in its first week and was certified gold in its seventh week, setting a record for the fastest gold certification by a male country singer. On June 13, 2011, in its 10th chart week, Honey Bee went to number one on the Hot Country Songs chart, becoming his ninth number one and his fastest climbing. The album was expected to debut at number one on the Billboard 200 with around 110,000 copies sold. 
God Gave Me You, a cover of a Dave Barnes song, was the album's second single. It also reached number one. Drink On It, the fifth song on the album, hit number one in April 2012, giving him his 11th number one song. In April 2011, Blake became a coach on the first series of The U.S. Voice alongside CeeLo Green, Christina Aguilera, and Adam Levine. Success didn't stop there for him. At the 54th Grammys, Blake was nominated for two awards, one for Best Country Album for Red River Blue and one for Best Country Solo Performance for the song Honey Bee. This is a big deal, you know, I've been doing this for, man, I don't, since 2001, I think I've made uh, eight albums and I've never been nominated for Grammys and stuff like that, so I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about tonight. So after eight years of making music, does it mean more to have it finally recognized here tonight? Uh, I don't know, man. You look back at, at things and, and you, I don't think I'll know what the, what the most important thing that, that happened for me career-wise along the way was until this is all over, but uh, I definitely want a Grammy, damn it. I'd like to, I'd like to have one. Freaking Taylor already beat me on, on uh, two of them tonight, so I have one chance left, so I got my fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Unfortunately, Blake didn't win the Grammy for either category. However, it was clear to see that his music was getting the attention of fans and critics alike. On April 3rd, 2012, Blake performed Over on the semifinals of the second season of The Voice. Over became Blake's seventh consecutive number one and his 12th number one hit to date. After a while focusing on The Voice and his married life, Blake went back into the studio to record his next studio album, titled Based on a True Story. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 and became the ninth best-selling album of 2013. Blake didn't take long to follow up the success of this album and went straight back into the studio to release his ninth studio album titled Bringing Back the Sunshine. The lead single, Neon Light, was upbeat, displaying Blake's stage presence and production value that he now had during his live shows. There's a neon light. It's got me feeling all right, gonna make it a double. There's a neon light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. In 2005, a year after his third studio album, Blake Shelton's Love Life hit the news. Blake and his first wife, Kaynette Gurn, were getting divorced after a three-year marriage. Not long after the divorce was finalized in 2006, Blake started dating the up-and-coming country superstar, Miranda Lambert. Their relationship quickly hit the headlines and they became a popular country music couple. On May 9, 2010, after dating for four years, Blake proposed after seeking and receiving her father's blessing. The pair were married on May 14, 2011 at the Don Strange Ranch in the bride's home state of Texas. After the wedding, Blake took a break from his work commitments to spend the rest of the month with his new bride. While Miranda Lambert and Blake Shelton made their home in rural Oklahoma, Blake's work commitments meant he wasn't at home very much. Not only was he a judge on the wildly popular show, The Voice, but he also went on tour promoting his own music. Miranda also had obligations as a successful musician in her own right. However, the couple insisted in interviews that they always made time for each other. However, cracks began to show when Miranda reportedly felt abandoned by Blake, having fixed commitments in Los Angeles filming for The Voice the pressures of fame and distance took a real toll on their marriage. By the time 2015 rolled around, Miranda Lambert and Blake Shelton's marriage was on its last legs. By the middle of the year, they were officially on the rocks and Blake proceeded to file divorce papers. 
Blake and Miranda's split came as a surprise to most in country music. The two seemed to be an incredibly stable relationship. They seemed to always have a ton of fun together. You always saw them up on stage, either collaborating or thanking one another for being their support system. So it really came as a bit of a surprise. Um, there had been rumors in the past that the two might have had some infidelities, but they always seemed to work through it. Uh, when the two split, it seemed to be a very tough time for Shelton and for Lambert. We were real people with real lives, with real families, friends, and colleagues, the couple said in a statement obtained by E! News. Therefore, we kindly ask for privacy and compassion concerning this very personal matter. However, that didn't mean there wasn't any acrimony, as they both accused the other of infidelity, although nothing was remotely proved. When Blake Shelton was going through his divorce from Miranda Lambert, he was utterly heartbroken. He found a friend in Gwen Stefani, who was also going through her own highly publicized divorce from husband Gavin Rossdale after several years. Gwen Stefani met Gavin Rossdale, lead singer of Bush, backstage in 1995, when No Doubt performed a concert for a radio station, while Bush were the main headliners. They married on September 14, 2002, with a wedding in St. Paul's, London. A second wedding was held in Los Angeles two weeks later. The pair went on to have three children together and enjoyed over 10 years of married life before things took a turn for the worst. In August 2015, Gwen Stefani filed for divorce from her husband Gavin Rossdale. Gwen has described the breakdown of her marriage as eight months of hell, as Gavin Rossdale was unfaithful to her. She tortured herself trying to figure out the secret he was keeping from her, an affair happening in their family home. Known as one of the most glamorous couples in the music industry, fans of the pair thought that they were going to last forever appearing so in love in their younger years. Yeah, sometimes, but, you know, it, it's working out. It's working out good. Um, so she'll just be watching tonight? Or how does she's here. She's inside. So she'll be watching. I don't have... There's no tricks, but, you know, we... Our love is alive. What can I say? It just <laughs> happens. It just happens. Nice having your wife since both of you started out in music and now you're breaking into the film business. The two of you doing it together? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's good to have her here to support. We try and be there for each other when we can. And sometimes it's difficult and schedules and all that stuff. But I think maybe you should be able to come down. So we'll celebrate together as we should. However, just over a year after the birth of their third child, the marriage began to fall apart. They released a joint statement which read, while the two of us have come to the mutual decision that we will no longer be partners in marriage, we remain partners in parenthood and are committed to jointly raising our three sons in a happy and healthy environment. It was later revealed that Gavin Rossdale had been accused of having an affair with their nanny, Mindy Mann. U.S. Weekly reported that the affair had gone on for three years and claimed Gwen had found out about the relationship after discovering texts between the pair and images of them together. Reportedly, Gavin Rossdale initially dismissed the text as just flirtation, but then confessed to the affair several months later, leading to their divorce. Gwen Stefani remained hurt for a long time afterwards, even admitting that she has the date, February 9, 2015, ingrained in her mind as the date she first discovered her world was falling apart. Despite finding it hard at first, the former couple now share joint custody of their three sons, Kingston, Zuma, and Apollo. Gavin Rossdale has gone on to say in recent years that he is embarrassed by how their marriage ended and never wanted it to end in divorce.
On April 29, 2014, Gwen Stefani announced she would be joining The Voice as a judge, alongside Blake Shelton, Adam Levine, and Pharrell Williams. This would be where Gwen and Blake would meet and form a great friendship, understanding the struggles one another were going through. An image was shared for the first public live taping of the series, the first photo of Gwen and Blake together in any capacity. On September 18, 2014, Gwen and Blake appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon to promote the new season of The Voice. The pair also sang a duet of Endless Love, and their chemistry became very apparent through the performance. Alongside her television commitments, Gwen told MTV News during New York Fashion Week that she was working on both a No Doubt album and a solo album. Billboard announced that her third studio album was set to be released in December. On October 17, 2015, Gwen Stefani performed a concert as part of her MasterCard Priceless Surprises tour series at the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City where she performed a new song about her breakup with ex-husband Gavin Rossdale, titled Used to Love You. It was released as a download on October 20th, 2015. The video was released the same day. The song was released to contemporary hit radio in the United States on October 27th, 2015. The track is her first official single off her third solo album, This Is What The Truth Feels Like. The album's second single, Make Me Like You, was released on February 12th, 2016. This Is What The Truth Feels Like was released on March 18, 2016 and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, with 84,000 album equivalent units sold in its first week, earning Gwen her first number one album on the U.S. chart as a solo artist. To further promote the album, Gwen embarked on her This Is What The Truth Feels Like tour with rapper Eve in the United States. Similarly to Gwen, Blake went back into the studio alongside his commitments on The Voice and released his 10th studio album titled If I'm Honest. The album once again reached the top of the country billboard charts and reached third on the U.S. Billboard 200. Every Time I Hear That Song was the lead single with its fresh pop sound. The video also felt very similar in style to his first single, Austin. If I'm Honest was a hit, and at the CBS People's Choice Awards won two awards, one for Favorite Country Album and one for Favorite Country Singer. I love it, I love it. I, I do not take this for granted at all, you know. Uh, anytime uh, the fans are the ones that are making the decision out there, that's, uh, that's really where, at the end of the day, where the rubber meets the road, because uh, we can have all, you know, all the industry 
uh, inside, you know, awards and, and committees and things like that. But when people that are actually buying the albums and the tickets, you know, take time out of their day to pick up their phone or their laptop, whatever they use to vote on, and they do that for you, means a lot because I know that's, I mean, it's a pain in the ass to, to do that, you know, and, and uh, they, they, they did it, and I can't believe it, and I couldn't be more thankful that they did that. And where are you keeping these bad boys? I got to get, uh, I was telling someone earlier, I, I got a little home interior shelf, I think, that my mother passed down to me from a garage sale. She must have got it from somewhere, but uh, I don't think it'll hold. These things are heavy. Like, this is like, you could burn a bug with these if you had the sunlight just right. Uh, so I don't know, I have to, I'm going to have to build on, I guess, for my People's Choice Awards. By 2017, Blake had released 10 studio albums and had been on The Voice for six years straight, not only developing a close relationship with Gwen Stefani, but also a good friendship with his other co-star, Adam Levine. If you would have told me then uh, that this guy was going to end up being uh, one of my best friends, I, I would have called you crazy, but... Uh, uh, that's, what is this, seven years later, six years later, whatever it is, uh, Adam and I have been on an, an incredible journey together. And uh, uh, we have both seen some ups and downs, and, and I've, I've seen, you know, a lot of ups and downs, and, and I've never had a more honest and loyal friend uh, than Adam Levine uh, through my personal journey knowing him. And, and uh, so... Uh, you know, I know this getting a star on the Walk of Fame is a big deal, and, and uh, we all know he's a huge star with music and movies and television, but I'm happy to see him get this because he's my friend, and, and, uh, and nobody is more shocked, I mean proud, <laughs> than, than I am that uh, he's going to have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame forever. Congratulations, brother. I love you. Later that year, Blake once again went back into the studio to work on his next album, titled Texoma Shore. The album was another commercial success, reaching number one on the Top Country Albums chart and number four on the U.S. Billboard 200. The lead single, titled I'll Name the Dogs, was a much more country-sounding song compared to previous singles, with the video showing Blake playing live at a traditional country wedding while people dance to his music. Blake Shelton also owns a franchise of restaurants and entertainment complexes called Ol' Red. The first Ol' Red opened in his hometown of Tishomingo, Oklahoma in September 2017. A Nashville location opened in May 2018. A third location in Gatlinburg opened in March 2019. A fourth location in Orlando, Florida opened in May 2020. That's my dream, that's my vision of somebody coming in here one day from you know wherever and stopping in to get a drink and and, and i happen to be sitting here you know playing my guitar singing some music uh, for me it's as simple as this is my home you know to come here and and have a good time maybe hear some music and 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 uh you know have have a burger and a drink or something and in november 2015 Representatives for Blake Shelton confirm the romance between himself and Gwen Stefani, and they eventually both spoke about their relationship, saying they grew closer after supporting each other through their divorces. It seems like the two found each other in the perfect time, began to lean on each other and become closer friends. From there, it turned into a blossoming relationship. The two seem very serious. They spend a lot of time together on Blake's farm. Blake has spent a lot of time with Gwen's children. And it seems like they are working towards building a family of their own. There's a lot of love between them. And I think a lot of people like to see them together because obviously they associate, you know, Blake has a very good boy image for the most part. And I think that um, the audience can really see how happy Gwen is next to him. So maybe deep down inside of the audience, you know, wants to believe that this is the one for Gwen. And, you know, she's really not one to be known for being in many relationships. She was in a relationship with uh, Gavin Rosdale for 13 years. That's a very long relationship, at least in terms of Hollywood standards. You know, a lot of these uh, celebrity couples, 
you know, are dating one day and then the next day they're, you know, dating someone else. And she also has children, you know, so I think she is looking for someone to settle with. There have been reports that uh, Gwen's kids really like Blake. So I think it's a good thing. And uh, fingers crossed, it'll be something that'll last a long time. In February 2016, the pair made their first public debut on the red carpet at the Vanity Fair 2016 Oscars after party. Shortly after this, in May, Gwen and Blake performed a duet, Go Ahead and Break My Heart, at the Billboard Awards. The song was recorded for Blake's album, If I'm Honest. Their co-star and close friend, Adam Levine, opened up about their relationship and claimed the couple were so in love. In June 2018, Gwen began her Las Vegas residency, titled Just a Girl, Las Vegas, and Blake was by her side to support her. The show was named after No Doubt song, Just a Girl, and proceeds from the show were donated to the organization Cure for Kids. On December 13, 2019, Gwen featured on Blake's single, Nobody But You, from his compilation album, Fully Loaded, God's Country. The song peaked at number 18 on the Billboard Hot 100 and 49 on the Canadian Hot 100. On July 24, 2020, Gwen and Blake released another single titled Happy Anywhere, inspired by the COVID-19 pandemic. In the following years, the pair gushed over each other publicly in interviews and performances. When finally, after five years together, Blake Shelton proposed in October 2020. There have been constant debates in the media about who will perform at their wedding, with stars such as Miley Cyrus and Adam Levine throwing their names into the mix. On December 4th, 2020, Gwen Stefani revealed she had plans to release a new single called Let Me Reintroduce Myself, after a series of cryptic posts on her social media accounts. The song was released on December 7, 2020, climbing to first on the iTunes chart. The song's music video premiered on January 1st, 2021. She also teased a new song called Slow Clap through her Instagram, which was released March 11th, 2021, alongside a remix of the song featuring upcoming rapper Saweetie. On March 30th, 2021, it was announced that Gwen's upcoming fifth studio album will be called Let Me Reintroduce Myself. Also in March 2021, Blake announced Body Language, his first brand new full-length studio album in over four years. The album will include the singles Happy Anywhere and Minimum Wage. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton tied the knot at last after five years of being engaged. It happened in July 2021. It was a surprise, pretty much secret nuptials. People only found out about it because they filed for the marriage certificate 48 hours by law. You have to do that before the actual ceremony took place. And it happened on Shelton's ranch in Oklahoma. He had a church basically built as the venue specifically for it. It was a very, very intimate ceremony. Just their family, one of Gwen's three boys read from the Bible. 
Carson Daly was the officiator of the whole ceremony. He, that he read the vows and actually was the one that said your husband and wife, which is really cute since he's the, the host of The Voice. Gwen already had a six to nine carat solitaire ring that she'd been rocking for the last couple years that Blake had given her. Now she's gonna have a band to go along with it and be Mrs. Shelton. So that'll be fabulous to see. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton have taken the media by storm with fans gushing over their love story. While their romance initially seems to have taken everyone by surprise, the duo took a chance on love and it paid off. The world cannot wait to watch them build a life together over the coming years.